Okay, great. In our last lecture, we got our store hooked up to where we can click out here and actually start the timer for our store that will actually see the money go into our account. So we've we've actually created the basic engine, but there's no visual display of this timer. And so we want to go ahead and drop that uh, visual display in by using a slider. So we're going to go back a little bit to the interface here by going to our store panel and right clicking to the UI here and choosing slider. And it brings this slider in and we'll, we'll move it into position here so it, it, it can be seen. And um, you'll notice that over here on the right, we got our inspector that shows our slider properties. And if I drag this value, it, you'll see it change it up here in our screen. So this is the value that we're going to be changing as everything moves along. Now let's expand our slider. Over here on the left, you'll know there's a little triangle here. So we expand it out, and you'll see that there's a fill area and a background area. So the fill area, and I'm going to open it up, this fill, this is where we want to show the green as we're, as we're progressing. So this is the color we're interested in to see our change. So let's just, it's going to be a really simple thing. We can go in here to our color, and let's just pick kind of a shade of green like that. And so that, as you can see, as I move the, the value, is really all we need to change. So we're going to start here, and as the timer goes along, and then when it gets to the end, it'll just start over, and it'll just keep uh, going so to keep track of our timer so we're already really close along but the, the only thing that is that we have stuff we don't need we have this little handle here that you can see where it's a it's a, an interactive slider so this we don't really need an interactive slider so we can take this handle slide area that people can click on and drag around and, and the simple solution is just delete it we don't need it so now notice how this looks like just a really clean slider now that's going to be our timer right up here. So let's name this instead of just slider. Let's say um, let's call it progress slider. So at least it has a, a bit a bit of a different name. And you'll see that there, there's the slider script here. So this is how you know what you need to, to define your object to tie it into inside of our script. So I'm, I'm picking up on this. This says slider. I can go back here um, and go, come down here to our project and double click to open up our, our script and it'll open up Visual Studio if it's not already open. And what we're going to want to do is come up here and type public slider and call this progress slider inside of our object so it's real easy to find. Now Fortunately, this is going to be really simple. When at, we don't, we want to update the the slider, not just it, you know when this changes, but any time that the the timer has started. Or for that matter, it, we might just want to update it any time, but we for sure want to update it when the progress is is going on, when when our timer is going. Um, so let's go ahead and say progress slider dot value remember the value is what we're changing and we just want it to equal the current timer divided by the store timer like our total amount of time so as this is going up it's going to show that percentage in our slider and so we're going to save that and what we have to do now just like with our other objects if I click on store panel, you'll notice that, that we have a place here as a placeholder to hold our slider. So we just dra drag our slider in there like that, and we run our, our game. Notice how, though, it's, it's already showing it with progress because I had left that over. If I click click, it's working. So we can see that our timer is going to work there. It jumps back to zero, but we need it to, to be a little bit more friendly so it'll show it at the beginning like that. So one, one way to do that is we can just take this progress slider out and bring it out into our update, you know, so that it, as soon as always it's going to keep this updated no matter what, like that. So it's at the very beginning. I can click, click, and start our timer, 
And as soon as it gets to the end, you'll see the money go up. And if I click again, you'll see the money go up. If I buy stores, you see the money go down. Click again, we'll get more money for each one. So we've, we've already implemented basically the core code of what underlies uh, a lot of these business tycoon type games are where you're purchasing something, buying it, you've bought all you can, you can't buy anymore, but now when you click, it's multiplying how many stores you have, now you have money to buy more, and click again, you make more money because you have more stores. I would encourage you, even with this basic design the way it is, to experiment and go out and try yourself making a few uh, you know changes to this make it your own maybe come up with some you know creative ideas you know let, let creativity kind of guide you as to how maybe you can can change this gameplay up a little bit even with this very basic design that's already there so obviously we're still just getting started it's it's not very pretty looking um, there, there's a lot more to implement but at this point, as you can see, you're able to click click this. Uh, you're able to make money in the game. You're able to buy more of these lemonade stand stores. And look, we've already got 28 of them already. And so now when you uh, go through a single cycle here, you'll see that money really jump. So have fun. Play with it. I, again, we're starting to see some visual representation here of, of what's happening in the game underneath. But in this next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to start taking uh, uh, away from some of what is really basic, basic programming and start looking at how we can create a little better design because uh, one of the things you can see right here is this only works for one store. And we're going to want multiple stores and we're going to want to be able to do some things that are going to um, make this game a lot more fun and, and, and a lot more uh, interesting to play. So in the next lecture, we're going to look at how we can um, refactor things is the term that we use a, a lot of times in development, if that's a new term to you. But basically what it means is go back through this and make it a little bit more um, uh, better designed, better designed so that we can expand it with multiple stores and that we have a, a, a better way of managing this game as, as we move it uh, forward with more complexity. So hopefully you're having fun so far. We're just getting started and uh, we'll start building this into a real tycoon game because you can't have a real tycoon game, I don't think, unless you can have multiple types of stores in addition to just owning um, one set of stores.